Hello everyone, it's George and welcome back to Call of Dragons. As dedicated free to play player who played this game for more than one year, I'm excited to share some insider tips and tricks with you. Stick around and let's dive in. Today we are going to speak about one of the most important updates that we are going to get in Call of Dragons. Finally, we got some new patch notes and I will try my best to read it with you. I have not read it by myself and I will try to showcase my view regarding the update and how it will affect the game. First of all, the update name will be the Real, Real Reborn. So let's dig inside and let's see what's coming to the future of the Call of Dragons. Major update, release of the Realm system. Well, that's the uh, update that we have been looking forward to. So let's see what's coming towards us, right? After the end of season 1, this land will be preserved as a home realm, becoming the eternal home and starting point of player's conquest. In the season after season 1, players can choose to stay in home realm or enter the season server to compete. Uh, players can always move back to home realm at any time from anywhere. So what it means is that uh, there will be one server, one kingdom, uh, where you can choose which kingdom it, it will be. And any time throughout the season, you will be able to go back to that, uh, like, let's call it home server, home kingdom. Which is pretty cool uh, change in my opinion. Finally, we are going to have a communities. The players who want to play with uh, certain uh, people, right? Uh, before it was really random every new season you were meeting new and new people so right now you have a choice you want to play with the players who you are familiar with or you want to fight with the uh new players who have no who you have not even met it yet i like this change um, i like in general community building in kingdom builder games which the call of dragons were lacking in the past so this is an amazing change of course i like that you have a choice you can choose you will you will stay in your home server or you're gonna go into the for example fighting kvk arrival of the high king that's a new uh, words for the call of dragons king right in a season the season s1 the alliance leader who successfully occupies the flame dragon will become the high king of the realm as a supreme leader of the realm, the High King has a, ser has a series of privileges and missions. Well, now we can understand that the alliance who will take the Flame Dragon is the winner of the kingdom. Before it was not that certain, there was like a couple of talks. Does it mean that whenever you take the Flame Dragon you won the server or not? But after this update, it's pretty clear that if your alliance takes the Flame Dragon, your alliance is the winner of this season. Uh, stand out from the crowd. Uh, on the High King's exclusive avatar frame and nameplate uh, receive a weekly refresh and exclusive chests. Well, this is some benefits of the um, Alliance uh, leader who won the KVK uh, and took the Flame Dragon. You will have a benefit such as like weekly refresh of exclusive chests. Gifted with extraordinary talent, use the High King's skill to bring benefits to the home realm, speeding up its development. Alternatively, use special skills in battle to increase your strengths on the battlefield. Employ the wise of Cub, appoint distinctive realm titles, rewarding merits and imposing light punishments. Well, another like additional benefits of for winning the season, uh, like you will have a uh, skills which you're gonna use on the battlefield against players. Also, the king will be giving some titles to the alliance members, I guess, and like some other rewards. Realm-wide proclamation send mail to all players in home realm. Uh, like that's not a big. Uh, change players in the home realm can increase their realm's taxes by gathering and completing daily quests the high king can use taxes to activate realm buffs use combat skills or appoint titles in addition the high king has the authority to convert a portion of the tax into gems for themselves each day well i guess more and more benefits for the alliances who are going to win uh, service the kingdoms in general i would like to have uh, some rewards for some losers also because what i can see here everything uh, what's what's coming towards the king the king and the home realm and in general winning the flame dragon you are getting more and more benefits uh, whenever you are winning but until it's not gonna be introduced and until we won't gonna see how it really affects the game 
it's pretty hard to uh, look forward how it will change the Call of Dragons gameplay in general. Seasons and other related adjustments. Except for Season S1, subsequent seasons will be shortened to 50 days. That's an amazing change, which we, I, I think I have been saying it before. Uh, seasons are pretty long. Uh, for example, whenever Augustine Stone is finished, you need to wait 2-3 to three weeks until the new season will start. That's the most boring period of the uh, game, whenever nothing is happening, nobody is fighting. Uh, you are simply just waiting until the new season will start and farming up, which is really, really boring in my opinion. I would like, I wanted to have way less uh, days in terms of seasons. And finally, we are getting 50 day seasons, which, which will have a high impact uh, to the game in my opinion. The phase will be faster and the battles will be more intense. That's all we want, right? Uh, the season progress in August on uh, Stone will be adjusted to match the 50-day length. Servers that were opened before the version update are not affected by the adjustment. Affiliated regions will be assigned by the system with realms as a unit. Players cannot choose their own affiliated region and it cannot be changed during the season. Well, like you cannot change the home server or anything, like everything will be uh, your choice whenever season will be over. After season S1 ends, players can only create alliances in their home realm. Created alliances will be automatically be affiliated to the realm. Players can only join alliances in the same realm as themselves. Well, uh, it, we need to see how it will be effective, right? Like alliances only matter on home realms after this update, so. Now, it's pretty hard to say in forward how this will affect the game. Of course, it will affect the game, but in a good way or a bad way, right? But in order for us to see it, we need to wait until this update will be live. The All Alliance data in Home Realm will be retained permanently. Behemoth buffs, Alliance members bonuses obtained in the Home Realm will be also be effective in subsequent seasons. Well, I, I think everything matters in terms of Home or Seasons right now, like... Other than that, the other realms which you can teleport and fight is purely for fun uh, because all the treats and all the bonuses you are getting from your alliance will be from the home server alliance. Alliance resources and alliance buildings will be counted separately in home realm and season servers. The alliance meristol will be closed 72 hours after seamless uh, completion of the season 1 season progress is achieved. It will be it will reopen at the start of the next season. Uh, the reopen the merit stop store will be moved from alliance page to the season event page. All right, some direction changes. Uh, adjustment to the warped skill card pet exchange in season S1. Uh, pet exchange only counts the market value with the current server. In subsequent seasons, pet exchange uh, pet exchange data will be shared between servers of the same season. Well, that's pretty easy to understand why. Uh, of course, it's a pretty normal change. Whenever you have a two season two KV case, for example, it will be pretty weird to have a different uh, prices for the pet skills on every single server, right? Uh, returning to home realm, when the home realm system is released, servers in season S2 and beyond will not be affected by the changes during the current season. Players, players will be returned to their respect, uh, respective home realms after the current season ends. Upon returning to the home realm for the first time, the following changes will occur to alliances. Yep, let's see what kind of changes we're going to have on, your, on our alliances, right? The alliance itself will be preserved and the alliance will be located in the leader's home realm. Well, that's the most easy solution how to... And teleport people from the alliance to different alliances or how to change the servers like simply whatever leaders take your alliance will follow current alliance tech progress will be preserved current alliance gifts will be preserved and resources will be preserved also the current ally alliance temporary members bonus will be preserved and will last for one month all members who have the same home realm as the leader will remain in alliance all members who do not have the same uh, realm as a leader will be removed from the alliance. Alliance territories and related bond buildings in season server will be cleared. That's pretty uh, normal changes in my opinion. Uh, everything depends on your leader, whatever your leader has as a home server. If you don't have it uh, in alliance, you will be removed. If you have it, the same home server as 
your leader you will be moving with them that's pretty normal because as it was said before um, alliances actually matter only in home servers based on the above changes we would like to remind all players if you want to return to the same realm as your alliance members please be sure to migrate to server where the leader is located during the last migration at the end of the current season that's important nobody should forget that uh, at the end of the season as on t1 for example for me um like if you are if you just join the new alliance in this server you need to migrate to the server where is your leader is located the following changes will be made to the other systems in home realm starting area players will be randomly relocated to any location within their affiliate region season progress all season progress will be marked as a complete and rewards will be marked as a claimed well that's pretty normal behemoths and the stages all behemoths and stages will become open and the first kill rewards will be refreshed great uh, exploration all mist will be dispelled all villages caves camps well that's pretty normal nobody likes to dispel the mist every single season right um, smooth route to prosperity internal affairs system adjustment significantly increase the internal affairs point to yield in all seasons and significantly reduce the time required to enact policies slightly increase the internal affair points requ required to enact policies in seasons sob1 sot1 and sob2 seasons optimize the display of war paid attributes progress bar more accurately well some ui changes adjusted the purchase limits for war paid skills in pet exchange changing the seasonal reset to reset at a fixed number of days to make it more clear to well these are more like ui changes nothing really really important right like for example they fix some display errors and some optimization changes which will be just great to the visualizing of the game right and even richer combat experience well i have said it before call of dragons has the best combat gameplay in the game and if they are making it even better i'm all about it right optimize the various aspects of the combat control experience added the legion control option interface uh, players can quickly access this interface through the legion overview in games uh, hood uh, to enable or disable automatic legion march set target legion target selection and more well that's actually for the movement of the legions uh, like i always like the uh, option of uh, enable and disable because you will choose whichever is suitable for you right uh, added the drag the legion target selection feature allowing players to filter the types of targets that can be selected when dragging legions enabling players to automatically exclude common legions rally legions and darkling legions optimized preset legions have uh, save function that's the ui change again optimized artifact and warped switching during legion selection uh, creation well if they are uh, helping us to use legions in a most perfect way and it's, it will be easier for us why not right but at first we need to see it actually how it affects the game right optimize the special effects uh, for hero zyda's normal attacks well uh, they are buffing and uh, like giving us um, in a better way the new heroes which is which will be zyda and margaret i'm not going to speak more deeply about these changes because i'm in season t1 and i have not seen i don't have access to these new two heroes which i will have in two weeks Added the branch of peacekeeping artifacts to support the autocast feature, including Kuratas Ras, um, like Catapult, Giant Spawn, well, these are uh, epic artifacts, uh, like only for PvE. Optimize the control experience for using Elixir. Players can now use Elixir beyond the storage limit at once, making control easier when healing a large number of legions. Um, well, I, like this is not a big changes in my opinion, some small changes which, which will have a small effect to the game. A more accessible map, the personal building view feature in the tra strategic map, players can use the personal building view button to view current constructed personal buildings such as turrets. Well, making us easier to see what we built and what's building right now on the map, right? 
an improved alliance system, union system upgrades, the warband system is here. Starting from season S2, the warband system will replace the current union system, the main features in included. Alliance located in the same affiliate region can establish a warband. Warband members can provide mutual alliance help, which is okay, nice, or also, and also relocate to the territory of the warband members. Okay, this is a big, big change. This will affect the game really, really much. Now it actually matters who is your like warband union and who is not. Warband members share behemoth buffs, another amazing news. Warbands can choose the set of unique territory color as its territories of the all members will display in as this color, okay? When the warband system is released, servers in season 2 and beyond will not be affected by the changes during the current season. The union system will be upgraded to the warband system after the current season ends. For more details and rules, okay. Well, I think this is amazing change again. Uh, I think ho this whole uh, new update will be all about creating communities. Uh, one was home realms. Uh, second one is that uh, uh, like alliance members will be limit will be two hundred, and you will have another two hundred as your union warband, which which basically means that you are same alliance. So from this, right? Added six alliance skills after unlocking through alliance research and charging through alliance member donations. The alliance leaders and officers can release their skills to accelerate alliance development and even shape the course of the war. Okay, new skills. A fine hole increase alliance members' gathering speed. That's great. Uh, increase alliance members' hero XP gained. That's amazing. Alliance members legions attacking move speed, amazing. Uh, summons a mysterious fog to the battlefield. Friendly legions inside the fog, uh, of, of fog of war are Im immune to ranged damage. Okay, that's that's interesting. Uh, recover stamina for all alliance members, heroes or heroes and war pets. Okay, I think alliance uh, will be more and more important like this game won't be a solo game if somebody was playing this game alone i have a bad news uh, everything is around alliances from uh, this update especially after the home realms and these uh, skills that's a huge changes i just set the road uh, connecting to rules to stage of the spires now after a stage uh, slash spire is occupied the alliance can connect the road to it after the road is connected the alliance can use this sage spire as a starting point of the road and build the alliance buildings okay um, other improvements added the story summary optimized hero gifts added water emojis okay popcorn well i think most important changes on the realm reborn is of course this alliance changes and the war bands in general i think this is amazing these new skills which we are getting from the alliance is actually epic and great I'm not sure about Mysterious Fog, we need to see how it actually works uh, during the fight, but like gathering speed, uh, hero XP, attacking the movement, uh, movement speed, well, I like this change, right? Everything here is great. Also, what's the most important is about home realms. Finally, we will be able to uh, create our communities and we will be able to play with the players who we want to play with right not every single time we need to migrate and to uh, find the uh, same uh, wordings with these new players every single season it's really tiring uh, finally we will have we will be we will have a chance to play with our friends that's the most important right i think uh, this is one of the best updates that we have seen in call of dragons I'm really, really excited how every single one of them will affect the game. And yeah, as always, share your opinion. It was my first time reading this update. I hope um, it will be helpful for you to plan for the future. Uh, if you like the video, press like, subscribe, share, uh, comment. It always gives me more and more motivation to make uh, this con content for this amazing game. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you are having an amazing day, morning or night, wherever you are. We are going to see each other very, very soon. Bye-bye and good luck.